the climate's changing, we've got ocean acidification going on, we know that we can measure it. Ocean acidification is a great unknown and it's affecting the colder regions at a more rapid rate than they thought. The increased carbon dioxide and the decrease in pH have a major negative impact on the ability of the uh, embryos, larvae, and juveniles to survive. That could be one of the biggest problems we uh, ever run into here, it's sort of a big red flag out there. The state of Maine is just starting to address ocean acidification as a problem. We're already seeing negative impacts in oyster aquaculture and in the clam fishery. The states of Washington and Alaska are both leaders in the field of ocean acidification research, monitoring, public education, and policy solutions. So we feel we can really learn a lot from the conversations that have gotten them to this point. People make their living here from fishing pretty much exclusively or every other thing depends upon those who do make their living from fishing. I mainly fish for salmon now and I long line for halibut and I fish for black cod and I fish for tanner crab mainly. And if it walks, swims or crawls, I've killed it in the Gulf of Alaska, the Bering Sea. You know, supposedly there's a lens of water that forms just off of Sitka every year that actually has a pH that is so low that it prevents the, it actually will dissolve the calcium in fish. And so theoretically, you know, the otoliths and some of the young sablefish and stuff won't form correctly and the shells on the krill and the shrimp shouldn't be forming correctly in this deep ocean layer. And I haven't seen any evidence of that, so we'll just have to wait and see. A form of air pollution known as carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere. The ocean absorbs about a quarter of the CO2 from the atmosphere, and the more we produce, the more the ocean absorbs. The carbon dioxide absorbed by the ocean is changing the chemistry of the seawater. The CO2 interacts with water and forms carbonic acid. This reaction decreases the availability of carbonate ions. These are the critical building blocks for building shells and skeletons of many marine organisms, and increases the number of hydrogen ions, which leads to lower pH and greater acidity. Toxic chemicals from stormwater runoff and industrial pollution that flow into the ocean can also contribute to acidification of coastal waters. Ocean acidification is really two issues. One is the potential upwelling of corrosive seawater in addition to the anthropogenic increase of carbon dioxide from surface waters. So in the Bering Sea we don't see too much upwelling, uh, too much deep water being brought to the surface because it's a shallow shelf. Um, but what we are going to see is this increase in carbon dioxide from, from the surface down. So we've started looking at red king crab and tanner crab and uh, we've published a couple of papers looking at the impacts of acidification and have found a substantial impact on red king crab in particular. Those were the two major things we were looking at, is how fast are they growing and how quickly are they dying. For the red king crab, the news wasn't very good. Um, we had complete mortality of all um, the juvenile reds at the lowest pH at 7.5 within 90 days. So they were all out of the picture very, very quickly. We got so little growth data, we couldn't even analyze it on those guys. We should think of acidification or the decrease in pH or increase in carbon dioxide as another stressor in the environment of an organism. And what we're finding is that some species handle that stressor differently than others. There's a lot of variability in the response to ocean acidification. I mean, red king crab and tanner crab live in the exact same areas. They have very similar life histories, um, but there's a huge difference in their response to ocean acidification. The question is, what do we expect to see in Alaska and with all of our fisheries? I would say that the response from the fishermen has been one of concern. I think they're aware that it's out there. They're aware that it could negatively impact their fisheries. Um, but there's so much unknown still that a lot of folks have put their opinions, I think, to the side and waiting to see what we have to show them. Some of the things that I thought about with ocean acidification was, oh yeah, well, we're not gonna have as many, you know, crab or, or corals or whatever, but I never put it down on the plankton level. And when you put it down to the plankton level, that becomes a pretty scary reality. Small uh, zooplankton and uh, what have you that uh, feed this whole operation, if that starts to change or the shellfish change, then uh, it's uh, really hard to say what would happen to the uh, ecosystem as a whole here and it could uh, very easily impact uh, our fisheries. The prediction was that 
pteropods should have been really injured by it, right? They're the main food of pink salmon, right? Pink salmon should have been terrible this year, right? It was one of the best years. It's a record break. It's probably the most salmon that's ever been caught in the state of Alaska that anybody can remember. So it's not as easy to predict. You kind of have to look a little farther out to see where it's going to affect these species. And what they see is, under various acidification scenarios, a sort of slow decline in the population over the next hundred years, as well as a slow decline in the amount of fishing that we can get out of them as well. We're seeing some interesting results in terms of being able to predict into the future how long until you see some sort of population level effect, and you will then see an immediate um, uh, community effect because the community depends so much on Bristol Bay Red King Crab or the snow crab fishery for sure. In Maine, 70 percent of our fisheries landings by value are shell forming organisms that may be very impacted by ocean acidification. 65 percent of that landings value is from one species, the American lobster. The impacts of ocean acidification on the American lobster are unknown at this point. So it leaves us in a very precarious situation in the state of Maine, making it very important that we better understand the impacts of ocean acidification on the marine organisms that we depend on. Cooperative research between the fishing industry and the scientists is a must. Fishermen are out there day in and day out, and because they're almost part of the natural world, they start to see cycles, and they start to see patterns, and they start to understand some of the factors that influence our resources out there. And scientists, on the other hand, you know, they're trained to kind of formally develop experiments and to try and experimentally understand the natural world. And when you put those two perspectives together, you get some really good research that answers the questions that concern the fishermen about the things that they see going on out there that the scientists don't notice. And you've got to have those to solve some of the resource problems we face. As ocean acidification or environmental changes impact the fisheries, I think we need to be hypersensitive. And I see a lot of autopilot on fishery management where I think we need to spend more money on fishery management to be ahead of the curve versus behind the curve. How can we prepare for this? How can we educate the communities and the fishermen early in the process to know what might happen? These animals do interact with their environment. and. If you don't see that, if you don't understand that, if you don't support that kind of research, um, then we won't be able to be prepared. You know, I've got maybe 10 years left in the fishery. I'll be 75, and uh, will this stuff recover by then, you know? All the ocean stuff moves slowly, and human life is pretty brief. <laughs>